Good morning, and welcome to this service of morning prayer from St. James Cathedral in downtown Toronto. I'm Carol Casella, and this morning we'll be using the Book of Alternative Services for our worship, and we'll begin on page 47. So let's just quiet ourselves a little bit. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, come, let us worship. So our Psalms are Psalms 131 and 132. They're found on page 888. O oh Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet, like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord, and from this time forth forevermore. God of earthquake, wind, and fire, may we know you also in the voice of silence. Teach us the way of quiet, that we may find our peace in your presence in the pattern of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the Mighty One of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep nor let my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the Mighty One of Jacob. The Ark, we heard it, we heard it was in Ephratah, we found it in the fields of Jerim. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the Ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, teach them their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but as for him, his crown shall shine. Gracious God, you have taught us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, that you are present wherever there is love and that two or three who gather in his names are citizens of your eternal city. Feed us with the bread of life that we may grow to recognize in every human heart a sign of your presence and an opportunity to serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
So our first lesson is from the first book of Samuel, the 13th chapter. <clears throat> the Philistines mustered to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and troops like the sand on the seashore in multitude. They came up and encamped at Michmash to the east of Beth Haven. When the Israelites saw that they were in distress, for the troops were hard pressed, the people hid themselves in caves and in holes and in rocks and in tombs and in cisterns. Some Hebrews crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul was still at Gilgal and all the people followed him trembling. He waited seven days, the time appointed by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people began to slip away from Saul. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering here to me and the offerings of well-being, and he offered the burnt offering. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, Samuel arrived. And Saul went out to meet him and salute him. Samuel said, what have you done? Saul replied, when I saw that the people were slipping away from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines were mustering at Michmash, I said, now the Philistines will come down upon me at Gilgal and I have not entreated the favor of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. The Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, ever. But now your kingdom will not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and the Lord has appointed him to be ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And Samuel left and went on his way from Gilgal. The rest of the people followed Saul to join the army. They went up from Gilgal toward Gibeah of Benjamin. Saul counted the people who were present with him, about 600 men, Saul, his son Jonathan, and the people who were present with them stayed in Geba of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped at Michmash. And the raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned toward Ophrah to the land of Shual. Another company turned toward Beth Horon and another company turned toward the mountain that looks down upon the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. So in response to that preparation for war, um, let's, let's uh, turn to Canticle, let's turn to the Song of Peace. Let's look at Canticle 2 on page 75. In the days to come, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall tower as the highest of mountains and be raised above the hills. There shall all the nations flow. Many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that he may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, from Jerusalem, the word of the Lord. He shall judge between the nations and decide for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares 
their spears into pruning knives. Nation shall not lift sword against nation. They shall never train for war again. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And our second lesson in the book of Acts, in chapter 8, starting at the 26th verse. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. So for our affirmation of faith, Let's turn to page 53 and say the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So for today, I thought we would use the very simple litany for our intercessions found on page 117. I've, I've changed it just a little bit, I think. Um, I think for the bidding and for the response, we'll say, um, Almighty God, as we come before you, and the response will be, hear our prayer. It's a very short one. It gives us lots of time with each of the petitions to name the things that are on our hearts today. Lord, 
Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Almighty God, as we come before you, hear our prayer. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Almighty God, as we come before you, hear our prayer. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Almighty God, as we come before you, hear our prayer. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Almighty God, as we come before you, hear our prayer. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit. Almighty God, as we come before you, hear our prayer. For many of us, this is Canada Day. We're celebrating both our wishes for continuing on the path of justice and reconciliation, and also for the great benefits of the form of government we have, which allows and requires all its people to work towards those things. Almighty God, whose wisdom and whose love are over all, Accept the prayers we offer for our nation. Give integrity to its citizens, citizens and wisdom to those in authority, that harmony and justice may be secured in obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, joining all of our prayers and gratitude, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'd like to wish us all a uh, a day of, of joy and purpose and serenity. Bye.